Hi, and welcome to TV My Husband Hates. I'm Kat Sims. And I'm Regan Kempton. And we are reality TV addicts. Addicts, uh, aficionados. Ooh, I like that. Experts. Experts. Basically, we know our shit when it comes to reality TV. 100%. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of TV My Husband Hates. How you doing this week, Kat? of a week and um without sort of getting into the real nitty-gritty of everything that the whole world has been experiencing this week um i think it's fair to mention that we're probably all feeling a little overwhelmed and i guess a little bit fragile by what's happened absolutely um it, it, it has definitely been a week here in the good old USA. And yeah, I think for me, again, not not to like rehash everything that's going on, but to acknowledge that it's going on. It's just been a week of kind of self-reflection and examination and kind of plans for moving forward. And what, you know, I think we all need to do to kind of just be better informed about the way we treat people. Yeah, I think there's been a real period of kind of personal self-examination uh, and scrutiny, which yeah. has been honestly at times really uncomfortable and um, and heartbreaking. And yeah. you know, it's really necessary for us and for me and for you and to feel that and to work through it. And I guess right now, all that we can do as individuals is to commit to doing better. Um, yeah. And uh, and yeah, so, you know, it's, it's a lot, but I'm hoping that it's a really positive experience. I hope it's a benchmark. Like, I hope we as a society pay attention, listen, and kind of all individually make a pact to do better, because I think yeah. we can. I do too. And I think, you know, we can do better here. Yeah. You know? I think we can do all sorts of things that will that help to kind of support the black community and and you know, we're thinking of ways that we can do better personally but also with this podcast too. So Absolutely. We're definitely bearing all of this in mind and looking at how we can improve um, our offering kind of going forward. Yeah. I agree. Um with that in mind, uh, never far from our thoughts, we are here to discuss this week's shows. Absolutely. And we've, we welcomed a new show this week. Uh, Below Deck Med started this week. So it just takes the place of Below Deck Sailing Yacht for us. So we've got a cracking three shows to talk about. I know. It's an easy this ride week. for us at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> and yet still, and yet still, we're struggling to find the time to do it. Yeah, it's it's so crazy. Um, though I will say this has been kind of the first week where I've had time to actually focus on my jobs and my projects for three days a week. So I'm very excited. The kids have gone into summer kind of camp schooling and they love it. And they're super excited to be out of the house and be around kids their own age. And I'm super excited because it finally gives me more than five minutes of focus at a time on one thing. Um, I'm quite jealous. We we got one day this week. We'll get no days next week, but the week after we'll get four. So oh. I'll be a hot mess until that week. And then I will be all over everything that you'll be like, hang on a minute. Have you got an army of people doing this? <laughs> no, no, no. Fired it's staff. Just me. It's just me, kid free. <laughs> this is what it's like. I um, will say, I'm pretty shocked by the amount of work I can do when people are not in my space. Cause my husband also went into the office for two days this week. And I was like, Holy crap. I have a quiet house. I shocked myself with how much I was able to get done this week. I mean, I should have done that, but I knew I only had one day. Yeah, so, no, you take that day for so yourself. What I did is I just met, like, I did some painting and decorating and yeah. paddle boarding and, and then they all came home, but it was the day I needed. I needed to do that. Absolutely. No um, apologies needed here, sweets. No. So, below deck med, we digress. Um, we digress, yes. Let's get episode, into it. Um, and we've got a mixture of brand new crew and old familiar faces. 
Absolutely. I think it's going to be a cracking season because we had some teasers at the beginning about drugs on board, Hannah missteps, somebody going overboard. It's a brand new boat, so it's humongous. It's like the biggest boat Sandy has ever captained, so that's going to have its own issues. However, we have all female leaders on this season, so we're kind of excited to see how that plays out. And we got a little taste of how the men feel about it in this episode. Yeah, we really did. I feel like there's going to be a lot for us to talk about in terms of gender equality, misogyny. The same old issues keep coming up in the Below Deck franchises. And 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 we can add race to that as well. We talked about it before yeah. the Below Deck um, season. Um, yachting is a very old, very uh, high-value enterprise. And with that comes these barriers that women and people of color have to face. And again, there's no people of color on this episode. There is an all-women crew, and I'm interested to see how that barrier works out because we can see that already who's the douchebag what's his name pete pete i mean he's out of the block pretty offensive yeah i mean this is a man who leads with his cock right like both in (laughs) figuratively and literally (laughs) and it's gonna be an issue yeah yeah so we'll Um, see i mean the only person that is close to being a person of color is kiko and he's from south america So he's uh, Spanish. I think that's the correct term. Anyways. Um, Yeah, he's he's from like south of Brazil. So he's Brazilian, essentially. So that is kind of the closest to, you know, not being white that we have on this boat. But um, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It's kind of, I don't know why it's shocking to me. I mean, it's not super shocking that it's a very old school, very white, very kind of area um but i think that needs some changing yeah i think it does but but we we've got the crew we've got this is right we're going to be watching we're not responsible for casting so we've got our old familiar faces we've got captain sandy hannah and marley are back all people that we've seen on previous episodes um they're leading the ship marley is our first female boatswain yes um and I'm interested to see how this dynamic works as well, because as much as I'm ready to, to criticize the men for, um, you know, well, for the douchey shit that they do, yeah. um, I'm not 100% convinced we're going to see three women working together to hold each other up. No, I think it's probably going to be quite the opposite. I think it's going to be a stressful situation. This is, I believe this is the first time Malia has been bosun as well. So she's tackling a new role with an all male, you know, deck crew. Hannah, I think we're I think this is going to be the season where Hannah either sinks or swims because I think Sandy kind of led with like we want white glove service, we want fabulous like table settings. Sandy is leading the season off, kind of being a little bit more hardcore on Hannah and I don't think she's going to let her slide as much as she has in the past. I think it's the sink or swim season. Well, rumor has it that she is out. And yeah. while she said, and I'm, I'm not, I mean, it's a spoiler yeah. for sure, but it's not like it's not all over the internet. Right. I'm really sorry. That was a lightning. That was, we're in the middle of the biggest storm. It just <laughs> rolled in. That was the biggest bang of thunder. I'm really sorry to digress. I didn't hear the thunder at all. I just saw you jump. Oh, that scared Crazy. the Jesus out of me. <laughs> um, oh, oh. Anyway, um, she has said that she decided to quit. Uh, the rumor is that actually she was fired. And I think the thing with Hannah, we saw it last time we talked about it on the last yeah. season. She'd lost the love then. I'm surprised she's back. I am too. And I don't know if it's because I know she's like dating somebody new. So I don't know if that kind of, she wants to give it like one more like good college try to see if she really hates it. Um but I, th- I think she probably, in hindsight, should just not have done this season. Like, she was very obviously done with everything last season. Hannah and Malia don't have the greatest history, so it'll be interesting to see how that possibly flares up between the two of them being in leadership roles and sharing a room. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll just see course, how it all plays out. She was supposed to share a room with the chef, 
but uh, that was because Hannah thought she'd have a penis. Yes. <laughs> uh, as it turns out, she doesn't. She does um, not. But yeah, I really want to see these three women working together to show everybody that, you know, when you put women in leadership roles, then all the good shit happens. I just don't see it happening. I don't either, but it'll be it'll be an interesting thing to see play out. It will. Um, other new uh, members of the crew that we've got, let's start with Kiko, the chef, the lovely Brazilian from um, from who's come from a private yacht setting. Yeah, and I think we already see that that kind of affecting his work this season when like or this episode when dinner is like two hours late. I think he is very used to only working for one person and kind of working on his own pace. And I think that's going to be a barrier that he's going to fight being a charter yacht chef. I agree. I also think he strikes me a little bit like a puppy that's just in line to get kicked. I mean, Hannah, yeah. he's, he's not built to stand up to the people like Hannah. Lara doesn't seem very caring and soft and no. ugly. Um, and I worry that perhaps he's a little out of his depth on this boat. I, I think you're right. However, his food is phenomenal, and Sandy loved it right from the get-go. So she's definitely not in the same position she was last season with the Russian chef. The food is good, but I think the timing is always going to be a problem. So we'll I see agree. how that goes. Shall we well, move also, to deck or interior? You want to do deck uh, first or interior? Let's do deck first. All right. Yeah, so we've deck. already kind of talked about Pete, um, who refers to himself as the unit. I mean, already. That's enough said. Yeah. I mean, he's, he, listen, I'm glad he's on the boat because I think he's going to provide a ton of shit for us to talk about. A hundred percent. But he's already calling Malia sweetheart and it's just so offensive. It's, it's ridiculous. Like you would never, I mean, I'm trying to think of like the, the dude term for like sweetheart. Like, oh, there isn't one. Yeah, shockingly enough. we live enough. in a patriarchy. Right, right. So I was going to say, like, you would never call your boss, like, your male boss in this. Um, my, I have a huge problem with him saying that, first of all. You don't talk to, like, your superior in those kind of condescending, bullshit, you know, little coddly terms. But also, like, Malia needs to shut that shit down now. I feel like she's already let it go on too long. Like, it's already happened too many times. Yeah, I think the first time that that was said, she should have come down hard on that. I also was, and I understand why she said it, but I was disappointed with her approach to the boys at first when she said, just treat me like one of the guys. And I thought, no, babe, don't bend and fit. Like, you are you, you're a female, you're a boss babe on this boat. Just tell them that they have to respect you as a female fucking bosun qualified captain yeah don't bend and fit to, to make no. them like you you say look i'm your motherfucking boss you call me sweetheart again you're off the fucking boat done 100 percent done yeah not one of the boys because you're not even there like you're not you're not one of the boys you're actually their superior so yeah. they would never treat their bosun like one of the deckhands and yeah. i think you're right i think that was a misstep where she's trying to fit in when she should just fucking stand on her own badass superhero self yeah and i mean i get why she's doing it she's in an industry that is yeah this is very very rare so i understand what she's trying to do but she's doing herself a disservice and and i don't and i'm worried that she's setting herself up for a fall because she needs to come down harder and stronger than any male bosun would have to well absolutely go ahead sorry I was going to say, it's like the teacher trick, right? Like you can, you can't ever get more strict in a classroom, but you can always get easier. So you start off being like full on badass and then you learn your kids and kind of adjust from there. But if you go in being like, they're trying to be their friend and all that bullshit, they're going to walk all over you forever. You can't ever yeah. get that back. And, and I wonder if Pete, it'll be the same. Well, it took Pete about 35 seconds to start walking all over us. So yeah. I really hope that she pulls it back. Um, we've also got Alex who honestly I didn't get much of a vibe for. I mean, I got kind of a little bit lads, 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 but beyond that, I didn't really get to know very much about. Yeah, no, I feel the same way. I feel like he's kind of meathead-ish, but I think he's like, he's lighter than Pete. Yeah. You know, yeah, like he's, like he's like not as hardcore. Light. 
Yeah, yeah. He's he's the douchebag light of, of the deckhands. And then the final deckhand is um, Rob. Rob, who is like the model and... I, I don't know. I, do, I don't get very many bro-ish vibes from him because obviously we just see him kind of sitting down and chatting with Jessica. I think maybe more to get in her pants. But a little like side below deck tea is on Instagram, I think yesterday, after the below deck sailing yacht reunion, which we'll talk about next week. Um, it's kind of been called out that we think Madison and Rob are dating. So she put a picture of her and a dude up. And all the other comments kind of called it out as Rob, like with the facial hair pattern and things like that. So there's a little like interconnectivity going on in the Below Deck franchise. So oh, I love that. Let's see if we see any of it. Gossip stuff. Yeah, that's what Um, we're about. I mean, with him, I will see how it goes. He seems to be kind of one of these people that's doing this kind of dark brooding model. I don't say very, you know, silent and strong type. I don't know if I buy it yet. I suspect he just wants to get into some girl's pants. Absolutely. Um, but we'll see. Um, and then on to the interior with Hannah heading it up. Um, I feel like it's going to feel a little bit like deja vu for Hannah this year, because this this season, because, of course, you've got Lara as her second stew. Um, Who used to be a chief, uh, like a chief stew, right? Yeah, and she had Bunny last season who used to be a chief student and that did not go very well at all no it did not not at all so we'll see i mean laura doesn't i haven't warmed to laura i haven't either and i think she's kind of a dick like i think regardless of what you've done in the past you're in a second stew role and you do need to listen to your chief stew and i think she's just kind of wants her to fuck off do you know well, what i'm I saying with like, laura, yeah i think with laura she's just a bit of a knob I don't even think there's much ego there I just think she's just kind of a dick it doesn't matter yeah. I don't think she's got great people skills I think she's a bit arrogant I think she thinks that you know she knows better and right just, she's not even going to pretend she's like no you're a dick this is yeah like, I'm know. just not going to listen to you and the thing is or pretend I don't understand you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, Kate Chastain could handle that, but yeah. Hannah is just going to push all of Hannah's buttons. She's going to lose her shit. This is going to be explosive. Yeah, I think there's an insecurity that Hannah has that we see come out as being super defensive and really aggressive, and it comes from a de- like an insecure place that I don't think Kate Chastain has. I don't think Kate is insecure about her job at fucking all. Yeah. Hannah is. And I think that's why people who have experience really get under her skin and she gets really threatened by it. So I think that's going to be a problem this season. I do too. On the upside, I think the third Jew, Jess, she wore, I warmed to her immediately. I think she's sassy, cute, doesn't take herself too seriously, seems to be willing to learn. Um, I do think it's easier for the third Jew to take that position because, of course, they don't know very much and they know they're green and wet behind the ears. And so they just yeah. kind of are left to kind of deal with it but I like her I do too I think she's super chill and I think she kind of has to be because she's working with two not so chill people so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out I definitely think there will still be clashes but maybe Jessica Jessica is a good foil for Hannah um on the interior so I can't wait to see how this all kind of plays out no, me neither. I think it's going to be really dramatic. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, and I am excited to see to see this season. I'm also delighted that we haven't had to miss a week of, of a below deck show. I know. Slotted straight in. It was seamless. I love that we pretty much have below deck all the time to talk about now that there are kind of three branches of it. I think it will be a year long show, which is lovely. I, I love this show for its like fantasy, like the beautiful yeah. places they go, especially being still kind of trapped in the house. I love seeing the places. The boat is gorgeous, but it is fucking huge. That is a massive, massive boat. So it'll, it'll be, be inter- fun. Yeah. It will. And thank God we've got it because honestly, the real housewives are doing my Sweden. <laughs> Jesus. They are all like being, they're, they're just all being children. They're all batshit crazy. I don't know what to do with them all. Um, I feel no. like I want to time out the fucking bunch of them. All yeah. of them. Every single one. Yeah, I'd agree with um, that. 
But let's move on to the Beverly Hills. Let's move on to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because that um, we can feel the tension rising. Yeah, it's it's definitely building up to explode. Is it like a tender point? Is that what they call it? Like when you're like building a fire, oh, like yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, some shit's going to go off. But I think we start off with Garcelle's event. Now, Reagan. Yes, ma'am. To be honest. I'm starting to worry that Garcelle isn't the cool dude that I thought she was going to be. Me too. And, like, I have to say, I, I like sassiness. I like a bit of shade. I don't necessarily agree with you throwing it when you are an accepting award for charity work on stage. No, I, I think, think that's, that's a bit of a misstep. Yeah, I do too. I think that's that. I think that was one of those things for me where I thought, you know what, your your beef with Kyle is totally legit. You feel what you need to feel, right? Made. But I don't think it's classy to start throwing shade at an event that has absolutely nothing to do with the show or anything surrounding it. I just felt like it was a little bit childish. Yeah, and, it was ill-timed. And mean, actually. I thought yeah. it was mean. Yeah, because, I mean, obviously, all of these women are big into charity in L.A., right? Like, everybody knows each other there. And I think it was really embarrassing for Kyle. Like, why would you do that to some? I, I don't believe in that sort of embarrassment kind of way yeah, to get your point across. Like, people. No, I think I think that's bullshit. I'm totally up for like the direct conversation over drinks while you're still at the event in your own little area. That I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with you doing it on stage. It's tactless and I think it kind of makes you look like a dick. Well, it does. And I think she did look like a bit of a dick. And actually interestingly, as you say, they did go on afterwards to go to the little area and Garcelle took that moment to talk to Kyle. And accused her of kind of leaving everything at surface level, not taking the time to get to know her. We've had this over a few episodes that right. Marcel accuses Kyle of glazing over her and not really interacting. And I feel a bit like Garcelle's kind of taking the piss a bit because, fine, they don't know each other that well. Maybe they are at surface level, but Garcelle is new to this group, right? And right. I think Rinna brings this up and Kyle. And there's many things that she hasn't turned up to. So I don't know if Garcelle's accusation has any merit, actually. I'd agree with you on that, because I kind of didn't know what the extent of the things that she didn't turn up for was until they kind of did that, like, montage where she hasn't been to all these things. And I think when you're new to a group, it is going to take time to get to know everybody. I mean, the group has its own dynamic, right? So I think if you're new to a group, you can't expect to just like slide right in there and everybody, you know, have this deep connection with you. You've got to build that and you have to give for that too. Like it's not the group's duty to like all try to get to know you. Like you need to try to get to know them as well. So I think, you know, it's a, it's a two way street. Like they're just not there yet. And I think that's okay. They can get there, but I don't think, while you're not in that place, you can be angry about not being six months in the future. No, and I think you have to, as you say, you have to meet each other halfway on that bridge. But also it's okay for some people to take slightly longer to get to know you than right. other people. So yeah, maybe she forged an instant connection with Erica, but Kyle, with Kyle it's going to take a little bit longer. And again, in that montage, we saw Kyle taking the, char- taking the opportunity to ask her questions and find out more about her. So yeah, I don't know where this thing about Kyle is coming from with Garcelle. Um, and maybe there's a ton of stuff we haven't seen. Yeah, possibly. But, but it, it just seems like she's kind of fixated on the fact that Kyle doesn't like her. And I can't really see any basis for it yet. But we'll see. Who knows what's going to come out of the woodwork? Yeah, social media wise, there's kind of a huge anti-Kyle wave of people really like hating Kyle, throwing shade about the way she's always acted, which I've never really got. Kyle, I've always liked Kyle. I've always felt like she's pretty down to earth, that she's a great mom. She's a great wife. Um, She really tries to get to know people well. Yes, she bonds with people more than others, but that's fucking real. Like you're not going to be on the same level of friendship with everybody. So 
you know, I've never really had a problem with her before, but it seems like we are a minority in the fans of The Real Housewives. Well, I'm never against being in the minority, you know. I'm happy to stand by my own opinion. I'm with yeah. you. I've always liked her. I don't I don't see any overtly awful behavior that I don't see from other girls. And she doesn't stand right. out as a mean, nasty person. For me, she stands out as one of the most grounded kind of people. I love the way that she said, you know, you come at me for my mum. For my, if you mum shame me, then I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be pissed because that's the thing that I think I do best in my life, you know. And I yeah. think, you know what? But maybe there's pe- things people know that we don't know. Absolutely. No, I think that's a, a definite possibility. Um, at this event, we see Denise just kind of duck out under the guise of work, but we all know she really just doesn't want to like deal with the shit going on again. And this Denise is really like, I don't know. It's really Quite surprised nice me. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm so shocked. Like she's been in Hollywood for years. Like Denise knows how to play the game. And so maybe that's what she has been doing or what she's doing now. Like, or she's just on damage control. Who knows? But um, I think that last season there was an element of me that was quite surprised at how down to earth Denise was. And I thought, yeah. you know what? She's gone through the whole Charlie Sheen thing and teenage and being like a teenage star and all of that. You know, she's actually super normal. And maybe I'm thinking that she's not. And actually, yeah. that this is the real Denise. Um, right. That is actually a little bit batshit crazy. Um, but let's, because let's talk about the dinner yeah. that she has with, they go out on a date night with her and Erin. Yeah. And again, everything feels so constructed. You know, she sits down, she's like, have you told the kids that we're not going to be along because it's a school night? And it's like, okay, <laughs> we fucking understand. get it. <laughs> you're a good mom. You don't need to Jesus keep telling us that you're Christ. a good mom. You're Nobody cares. In the post. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm like, like flogging a dead fucking horse. Yeah. We're not buying it, Denise. Just shut the fuck up. Right. You're protesting too much. You're making yeah. it too big of a deal and nobody cares. And we all saw the way your your daughter reacted to the threesome comment. She didn't give a fuck. So, like, no. drop it. Fuck it up. And again, she's pushed and pushed and pushed at the at the dinner at the garden party, the barbecue, yeah. what by Rinna. But you never told me how did she respond? What did your daughter say? I don't want to talk about. It. Of course you don't, because that invalidates your entire fucking argument. <laughs> she didn't give a fuck. She didn't oh, care. She was an that. older teenager that laughed it off like everybody has told you that she would. Um, the way Denise tells it, you think that, like, the kid's one step away from fucking rehab because she overheard some conversation about a penis and two vaginas and a threesome. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, in all real talk, like, I have younger kids. Would I want people talking about, like, threesomes around my young children? Honestly, for me, I probably wouldn't care I don't think my kids would even pick up on it because they'd be running around doing other things. Got it. That's how I feel about my kids. Yeah. If we were like in my living room and like the kids were at the table with us, would I have a problem with that chat? Yeah. I'd be like, dude, guys, like the kids are right here. Like we'll send them down the basement. Your kids are like seven and and four. Exactly. If they were teenagers, I would just have the normal chat with them. Like we talked about all last week. Like it's, it's, it's a point to talk about. So I don't, I don't get why this is such a fucking big deal that it has to go through like seven episodes of the show. Yeah. And I think Erica makes a really good point. She's like, last season, Denise was so sex positive and we celebrated her for that. Yeah. And this is why this rankles so much because it just doesn't fit what we've previously known about Denise. And so not only is that confusing, but then it's forcing them to question Denise in general and who she is. So, of course, this is an issue that the girls are struggling with. I don't think they're conveying it brilliantly. Right. Or I don't think Denise is listening. I don't think it's me- they're making it possible to have a conversation. Right. But this isn't about the conversation that happened at the pizza oven party, whatever that was. Yeah. It's about who the fuck is this Denise? Well, and I think this is where it's interesting because Garcelle really backs her up and she's like, well, I wouldn't want you guys talking about that in front of my kids either. But again, my kids would just be running around not paying attention. Like my kids don't give a shit what I say. Like they're not even listening now. So it's fine. 
I think Garcelle is too new to kind of understand the backstory. And I think that's where like, she's getting confused. Cause she was like, so she didn't want you to talk about it. Big deal. We know not to talk about it in front of your kids anymore. Like, why is this a problem? Um, and I agree with Garcelle on that point. Like, yeah, fine, Denise. Like if you don't want to tell them, you made them that point, everybody, you know, you can make that point in a way that other people would understand. Like guys, like I know I talk about that. Like that's our chat. I just don't really want it around the kids. That's why it bothered me that night. Cool. Done. It doesn't mean that these women are always going to be talking about sex around your kids and you can't bring your kids to a kid party. Like, I think that's taking it too far. Well, and I think that is offensive. I think if one of my friends, quote unquote, yeah. said, I don't want my kids around you, I think that could be one of the most offensive things people oh, could yeah. say to me especially in light of where this has come from. It's not like the girls exposed them to, you know, hard drugs. Right, right. You know, and gave them a fucking joint to smoke. Or it, sexually molested them. Like, nothing major happened. No, and for Denise to react like this, yes, it's caused them to question her, and that's unsettling. But it's also offensive, and it just doesn't make any sense. And I think this is, I think this is the root of the problem. They don't yeah. know where or why this is why this is coming at them. And there's and conversations are shut down. And in fact, it's not just it's not just Denise that's shutting it down. You know, we have Aaron inserting himself as well. Uh, I don't like that dude at all. But like again, I I really liked him last season. I did too. Like I had a really soft spot. Like he seemed cool and really loving toward her kids. And I was like, well, this is great. Like she's got like a nice quote unquote normal dude. This season, he's just super aggro. Like this conversation with the ladies where he just shuts them down and doesn't let them have an opinion about it. I mean, I'm all about defending your wife, but he wasn't doing that. No. He was just attacking everybody else. Not yeah. He was on the offense not the defense he's not standing up for her within the context of the conversation yeah. all he's trying to do is silence the other women like just shut them down and that that's not okay no. stand up for denise have the conversation be involved in the debate have a discussion about it but don't just say don't stand up and say now you guys need to just shut the fuck up like yeah. that's not how to deal with anybody no um, especially a table full of people that your wife is friends with. Um, I feel really uncomfortable about Aaron. Aaron, I don't know how to say it. Um, I don't like this way that he's forcing this kind of woo-woo electromagnetic bullshit, you know, all this yeah. sort of crystal-y shit. Like, I, right. I have a touch of the woo-woo. I love a crystal, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I have a, homeo a homeopath in my phone contact but it's the way that he's imposing it on everybody. Yeah. You know, it's this sanctimonious, holier than thou, I'm right, you're wrong, and if you don't listen to me, you're going to get... You're going to die. You're going to be on the wrong side of the fucking information. <laughs> yeah. That pisses me off. He's just super aggressive. He's super aggressive with everything, right? He's super aggressive talking to the women. He's super aggressive with his EMF anti-5G crystal bag that he gives... Kyle really, really and it's super that. aggressive with Denise like as we see them walk out and she's like don't say anything we're on camera he turns around and is like I will crush your hand if you don't stop telling me what to do and I miss that oh yeah I mean it was like it was literally like I think the credits were on the screen and they were still filming and he said that and I was like holy shit this yeah. guy is not all woo woo chill whatever this is fucking yeah. aggro man <laughs> Well, it is. And, and all of a sudden, I've got to be honest, going back to last season, Denise and Aaron, and this, yeah. season, this season, Denise and Aaron, makes more sense in the context of Denise Richards and what we know about her. Like, right. it would be weird if she hadn't gone through all that shit and wasn't batshit crazy and wasn't still making terrible choices in terms of men. Like, maybe that's what's happening. Um, but I missed that comment completely. And it was only when we were doing it, when I posted the picture on on Instagram that yeah. people brought it up and I was like what I went back and, and listened and that's not okay I think if my husband ever th threatened me with physical violence excuse me you kick his ass violence, <laughs> um, I'd kick him in the nuts which yeah. seems a bit hypocritical <laughs> but I would I'd kick him in the nuts give him a wedgie yeah his dinner money um, absolutely so I think there's a lot going on and maybe 
maybe the relationship is causing her to be like this as well. Maybe that relationship isn't all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just know that the trailers for what's coming up next is pretty hardcore. Because what, we're on episode, this is episode eight. And I think... And I think Andy said episode 10 is where it starts kicking off. So we're almost there. It was definitely teased at the end of this um, episode. Yeah, we had Brandy Gonville teasers come in. She's not in until episode 10. But right. it could be that maybe next week we start to see the emergence of these, um, what will be rumors, but obviously we'll later find right, out. Right, right. I mean, it's going to kick off. I mean, it's what we've been waiting for all season. Yeah, it's been like the, it's a, it's been less of a buildup than Jackson and Brittany's wedding, but it's almost to that extent. Yeah, I've got a little bit of PTSD from the waiting for Jackson and Brittany's bloody wedding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, anyway, we'll see how that goes, but, but it's becoming a very dark, dark place in the Richard world. Yeah, and I mean, it's really interesting to me because I feel like that's all the storyline is, right? Like, all the other women's issues are kind of falling by the wayside, even though we see Sutton bring her boyfriend to this barbecue and all the kids are getting along beautifully and Teddy's going to eat her placenta in pill form. Like, none of that stuff really matters when, like, this crazy shit is going on, so. Yeah, we don't care about any of that. Yeah. It's all about Denise. (laughs) Um, And then last but not least, uh, we've got the lovely Real Housewives of New York who um, are still in Newport and still being unbelievably mental. They're fucking acting crazy. Crazy. So it in this feels, episode... Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, it feels like kind of an unsafe space to be because I never know which one's going to kick off next. You know, oh, it's yeah. going to be Dorinda. Is Kinsley going to lose her shit? Is Leah going to go crazy? You know, is Ramona going to go, is Sonia going to puke in a bus? I don't know. <laughs> we have no on. idea what to expect. <laughs> it's like it's coming at you from all directions <laughs> yeah. and you're completely unprepared. I get hand cramps when I write, like, with my pen when I'm taking notes for this show. It's just like, holy shit, I can't get everything down. <laughs> I know, too much crazy. To get too much crazy. Of. Um, but this is the one where we see Leah's sister, Sarah, join them because Ramona said that she could and... Ramona is the most fucking terrible host of all time. I don't know how you say, well, first of all, like I don't understand the whole back and forth about her coming anyway. We talked about that last week. Then when you say that someone could come and they show up, you're a complete fucking asshole to their face. I know it's mental. I mean, That's here's rude. the thing. Eve, it's very clear. Ramona didn't want her there, even though she right. said she could come. Fine. We all know you don't want her there. But despite that, when somebody turns up, you are nice to them. And it's like a basic human rule of life. You're not yeah. nasty to new people who rock up into an already established group. Especially if it's like their first trip after they've had a baby. She has like a seven-month-old baby and she just wants to get out and have some fun. I remember that feeling. I remember it's like the greatest feeling. time ever when you can go. And like to... If I had shown up at a place and been treated like that, it would have fucking crushed me. Well, yeah, because you don't get many opportunities. So if no. that's your chance and that's what you have to deal with, then, I mean, it's just awful. It's, it, oh, I don't even know where to start. I, I mean, they are just all, should we talk about the dinner? Should we start with the dinner first? Yeah. And actually, I kind of, I want to take a little bit of a step back. At this dinner... Like, obviously, right before this dinner, Leah has apologized. She was like, I'm sorry for my behavior the, you know, the night before. It was like a cathartic release for me. I, I've had a really shitty week. Like, I just, I needed to let that go. But let's keep in mind that she did this at the hotel that we're, they're staying at in, like, a private dining space. It was just, you know, like, there weren't guests all around. It was a private space just for them. And she fucking let loose and went crazy. Now we come to this dinner at a restaurant of like Tinsley's friend that Tinsley has set up. And these women act a fucking fool in public. Ramona, when Ramo- Ramona, you never know what you're going to get. No. She has a, a side of her that is incredibly forgiving, very nurturing, very understanding. Yes. And then she has the other side of her that is mean girl, bully, narcissistic and 
fucking just and just rude plain rude yeah. and the way that her and sonia and luann i'm lumping her into because she mm-hmm. knows better behaved at this dinner by refusing to join the table because of this childish ridiculous stance that they were taking is possibly one of the rudest things i've seen them do absolutely I feel like it's like, it's like beat, it's bitch and heat mentality, right? Like, it's almost like they're, you know, animals in the wild and it's like their last chance to mate with dudes that like, honestly, I don't think they would have even given a second look had they been anywhere else. Like the dudes didn't matter. It was just the fact that they were dudes. And that was more of a priority than actually being present with their friends on this girl's trip. And I think that's despicable. Well, I think even more than that, I think it's more despicable than that. I don't think it was more of a priority. I think they made a conscious decision to fuck up that dinner. I think yeah. they decided they weren't gonna play the they weren't gonna play the game. They were going to be dickheads and they were gonna ruin that dinner. Good call. You're totally right. I didn't and even I think, think about that's that. That's what they did. And I think because Ramona took her bat home because Leah's sister was there and they they got mean girls, they joined forces and they behaved disgustingly. And I'm going to have to say, I have a real problem, especially with Ramona and Sonia and Luann banging on about Leah's behavior. Like, we have seen these three women do some of the stupidest shit ever on TV, get fucking wasted, act a fucking fool. And they do it in very public ways, mostly. Like, it's in restaurants and what have you. And I I have a real problem with this holier-than-thou attitude, especially from Sonia, towards Leah well from all of them I mean yeah. I hear what you're saying with Sonia but yeah we've seen Luann behave absolutely awfully. we've seen Rama- Ramona constantly behave badly I mean none of them have a leg to stand on and I think that they are I think what's interesting is that they're assuming that Leah is going to be lacking in the in the kind of confidence to stand up to them right and they're just almost trying to break her but she's not going to be broken no she is, I, she is taking the high road later when she apologizes to Ramona. I do believe that she, yeah. was, she owed her an apology for throwing ravioli at her. Yeah. I mean, I can't blame her for it, but it isn't the way to handle shit. No. Um, but I do think that she could have asked for an apology in return. Um, yeah. And I think there is an element of Leah that will when Ramona's concerned, kind of give in a little bit. Well, she addressed it in the confessional, didn't she? When she really identified that mommy, that mommy relationship with Ramona, it was, it was bang on on what we talked about last week on how that is always going to be an issue between them. Um, it, it's yeah, going to be fascinating to see how it all plays out. Yeah, she just, I got that quote. I knew I had written it down. She said, all my mummy issues are being projected onto this relationship with Ramona. And, and it's right. I mean, I, I think it's, I hope it's a good relationship. Like, I hope that they can learn to, to coexist in a way that supports them both. They can both yeah. behave well. But we've seen it work when she's in the car telling her that she has to go and fix, take some lilacs and fix it with her mum. We've seen that relationship. Right. Work. Now we're seeing it not work. And I don't know which way it's going to go. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see. Who knows? That, that's the end of Rhode Island, the Rhode Island trip. And they head back to the U.S. I don't know why I'd like, or not back to the U.S. They head back to New York. I, again, I'm really stuck on like this behavior between these, these like women, both in private and public, because like, I feel like, and I don't know if you think this or not. But when Leah has kicked off, it's been in a very private space. Like it was at Ramona's backyard at a, you know, at their kind of little sleepover party. It was at this like special area of a restaurant or the hotel where nobody else was there. And and I think that's okay. I think kicking off in private and blowing off steam is totally fine behavior. I'm I'm more bothered by the very public disgusting behavior of like Ramona, Sonia and them. I don't know. Well, How do you feel? It's just disrespectful on so many yeah. levels. It's not just, maybe there is an element of disrespect for Leah to kick off like that at a dinner that's nice, fine, but at least it's a fairly safe space. At least it's not, you know, it's it's, it's, it's awkward for the people that you know and love. Doing it in, in the restaurant just makes everybody feel awful. I mean, the restaurant are put under undue pressure and stress. Yeah, the, the other guests. The other guests have to deal with 
your terrible behavior. You know, your guests are more embarrassed because it's happening in a public space. Right. Kinsley's mortified because it's her mate's restaurant who's, let's face it, they're not paying for this fucking dinner. No. They're giving it to them for free, so it's on the fucking show. Yeah. And they go in and smash the place up. I mean, it's the 60-year-old women yeah. behaving like this is it's crazy. off the scale, batshit, unacceptably crazy. Yeah. I mean, That's Dorinda fine. was, like, the only one that probably did the right thing, where she had been drinking all day, and she was just like, I just need to go. I need to go have yeah. a burger and go to bed. And I was like, yes, Dorinda, you played that right. Absolutely. And it's Dorinda who decides to try and pull it together. Luann says she will, but she doesn't do it. She does fuck yeah. all. Too busy on her next cabaret. God. Right. Um, Dorinda says, she makes a really good point. She says, we're gathering, but we're not connecting. So she decides to host a, a British... Quote, unquote, tea <laughs> yes, how authentic was that British tea? Of course, we all turn up with fascinators for, for yeah. our tea. Um, uh, and there's no booze. You know, she said that, but there was a bottle of rosé on the table. Oh, well, there was some booze then. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Um, it is a party. It kind of sets a nice scene, and it does, you know, Leah, as we said, take the opportunity to apologize to Ramona and make it good, as yes. Dorinda would say. Um, and then we have Dorinda, just when I think Dorinda's like growing up and doing the right yeah. thing and bringing the group together, she gets another hard on for Tinsley. I don't know what, like, I don't know what her deal is. I don't know if she just wants to deflect attention away from her and her relationship, or she's been like, just so tired of being in her head that she has to attack somebody else's, but it is a hundred percent. Okay. For Tinsley, not to fucking run back to the group every time she decides to go out on a date or hang out with Scott. It's her private fucking business. It is entirely up to her as and when she shares that information. And especially in this instance, because it's very volatile. Like everybody in that group has an opinion about her and Scott. Right. It's also the love of her life. Like she's at risk of getting really, really hurt. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like one of the problems with the relationship was the show. Like Scott didn't want to be on the show and that was a huge issue in their relationship. So knowing that and all the girls know that, I would think as a group of friends, you would be more sensitive to not bringing him up on the show because that was part of the problem. Well, I suspect the other girls are, but of course, Dorinda decides that she's seen it or somebody's told her something, she's seen something, whatever, and she decides to challenge Kinsley on it. And even at this point, I'm like, but why? Like, you know that this is emotional for her. You know that this isn't, this is precarious emotional yeah. shit. Why poke the bear why do you need to know so badly and also can i just say you random people out there who are taking video of what the real housewives are doing extra yeah. why don't you focus your attentions on maybe more important shit that's going on in life rather than like trying to take video and sending it back to people and do all that shit let these people yeah. have their own fucking lives you get a life it's bullshit get a life film your own mate but yeah even if Dorinda feels that Tinsley should be sharing that because that's what Dorinda would do, just because that's how she does it doesn't mean that Tinsley no. has to handle it in the same way. She has an absolute fundamental right to keep her own business to herself until she is ready and willing to share it. And I think we talked about it a little bit earlier in our pre-prod that, you know, she probably, one of the reasons she wouldn't have said anything apart from, you know, not being fucking ready and not wanting yeah. to, was that she worried that the reaction from the group would be overwhelmingly negative. Because normally it would be, and it has yeah. been in the past. Like, I don't think it's an unfounded fear. No. So Dorinda essentially forces her to tell everybody because they're all in the same fucking room having this conversation. And everybody is really positive about it, which I did really like. I like that they were all there for her and really like bigging her up, being like, you know what? No, like go into this you do you and you be you and make him come to you. And I really liked that advice, but at the same time, like I wish it had been Tinsley's choice to talk about her personal life and get their input. Well, and I think that the reason that the reaction was so positive was because actually it was very, very clear that for the first time, Dorinda had real not for the first time Dorinda had really related <laughs> to Tinsley, obviously, right. but Tinsley's 
response seemed very heartfelt, very emotional. This wasn't just surface curly haired shit anymore. Right. This, it was very clear that Tinsley didn't want to talk about this, that she'd been forced into it. And it was really very, very difficult for her. And I think every single person except fucking Dorinda mm-hmm. picked up on that and decided now is not the time to kick this puppy. Like, right. She needs, let's give her a fucking treat and a stroke and a scratch behind the ears. That's what this kid needs right now. Um, and I just don't know why Dorinda is, is continuing down this path. No, it's it's ridiculous. She needs to stop. Like, yeah, she has recognized there's shit going on with herself. She needs to stop attacking everybody and fix her own shit. Clean her own house. Make, make her own good, self Dorinda. nice. Yeah, make it nice. Um, All right. So that's us. That is us. Um, it's been a weird week, but we are still here and we're still doing it. And um, always willing to hear any feedback or information yes. or any ideas about what you think we could do better more of less of what you want to hear us talk about drop us an email old school at hey at tv my husband um and we just like to hear from you you know what just write just say hi yeah you just want to know you're out there you guys are doing okay and you're in an okay mental space as well um Next week we'll be doing, we've decided not to do a mini-sode on the Below Deck reunion because it's just one episode. So we'll just roll it into next week's podcast. And coming up on the 16th, we've got Million Dollar Listing LA joining the lineup. So there's a little bit of new blood. Still no word on um, the Real Housewives of Potomac and when they're actually going to roll that out. I suspect it'll be later in the summer. So those are kind of show update corner. Also, yesterday, we just dropped our newest Patreon um, content all about the Cavalry Cutler split up. So if you want to hear that, you need to head on over to Patreon and uh, drop us some cash and you can get some access to that. It's not a lot of cash, just a little cash. Um, about a cup of coffee, I think. It so. is. About a cup of coffee once a month. I mean, you can. Yeah. It could be three cups of coffee once a month if you wanted more content. But Absolutely. Very basic. It's not going to cost you very much. So, um, yeah. So drop us uh, if you can. Do head over there, and uh, we'll make sure we create some great content for you. But in the meantime, um, that's us for this week. So that's have right. A wonderful, wonderful week, uh, and we'll see you on the flip side. That's right, and remember. Smart people watch reality TV too. Bye bye. Please subscribe, rate, and review TV My Husband Hates wherever you listen to your podcast. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at TV My Husband Hates and join the Facebook group to keep the conversation going when the podcast ends. If Twitter's your thing, you'll find us at TV Husbands Hate. Theme music and production for TV My Husband Hates is by Jimmy Sims.